Hi, dear friends. Uh, today we will talk about speaking section. I know that many students have difficulties while preparing for speaking section. And uh, firstly, in this video, I'll try to give you a brief information about speaking. First of all, let's talk about time. A uh, speaking section lasts for from 11 to 14 minutes. It's up to you. It's up to your conversation with the examiner. And secondly, the speaking section consists of three parts. In the first part, the examiner will give you some casual questions about uh, some topics. Um, for example, he can ask you about weather, weather conditions. He can ask you about your attitude towards um, some aspects of our life. For example, how you spend your leisure time, do you prefer to meet with friends, and so on. In the second part, he will give you a topic. And you should speak about this topic from one to two minutes. You will be given one minute to prepare for this topic. The topic can be like this, like describe your best friend or describe the situation when you, uh, when you were happy or describe uh, a skill that you want to learn. Uh, while giving you the topic, he will also give you some questions like what it was, where it was, when it was. Mostly the questions are like this, what, where, when. And the last one is usually like, explain what you felt about it. While uh, speaking about this topic, you should cover all these questions and you should answer to them. Um, in the third part, the examiner will give you some questions related to the topic you were talking about before. Um, then he he can uh, he can change the topic and he can talk about some other things. In the third part, questions are a bit more difficult, like they are not so casual like in the first part, and you have to answer. Uh, you have to give very interesting answers, and you should always support your um, answers. Let me give you a brief structure about. Uh, how you should answer the questions on speaking. All questions in speaking section should be answered in the way that firstly, you give a direct answer. Secondly, you support your idea. You, you say why, in, in what ways or how. Thirdly, not importantly, but it's good if you give some examples. For example, you can give examples from your personal life, your personal experience. It's very good. It means that you are a person with, um, like, say, with a worldview you, and you have a great experience uh, in life. So you can share this experience with people. And it's, of course, um, affects your uh, general score positively. And uh, the last point is that you can suggest an alternative. Alternative, it's like uh, mostly we... Alternative, what's, what does it mean, alternative? We uh, suggest an alternative when we answer no. For example, uh, he can say, uh, do you prefer uh, tea? And you say, no, I don't drink tea. Uh, because I don't like its taste, you support your answer, then you give uh, like an al alternative. Instead, I prefer to drink water because I think that drinking water is healthier than drinking tea. So as you see in the question with tea, I said no, I don't drink tea, but I suggested an alternative in order not to finish the topic like no, I don't drink tea and that's all. Uh, so again, a brief review about how we should answer the questions. First, direct answer. Secondly, explain, support your answer. Next, you can give some personal, some example. Next, you can give some examples from your personal experience or uh, some example from other people's experience. It's also allowed. And lastly, you can, um, and lastly, you can suggest an alternative, but again, we suggest an alternative when we answer no. So I hope 
this can help you. And I wanted to mention about assessment criteria. Four things are important. First, it's your pronunciation. Secondly, it's your fluency, grammar and lexical resource. Grammar, of course, you shouldn't make any grammar mistakes. And you should use some complex grammar um, in some parts of your speaking. Not during the whole speaking, but in um, some parts, especially in the third part, because it's mostly academic part. The first part is mostly is informal part, so there is no necessity to use some uh, complex grammar structures. Uh, secondly, lexical resource. Uh, no one says that you should use some uh, extraordinary words or, I don't know, you should use some very complex, uh, difficult words. You should use collocations, uh, you should use some informal phrases that native speakers use during their speech in English. And no one is talking about slangs, uh, we are talking only about collocations. Um, pronunciation, you should pronounce words correctly, you shouldn't make any mistakes, especially be careful with stress, for example, don't say development or so on, say development, products and so on. And the last one is fluency. In your speaking you should be fluent because native speakers are fluent. You shouldn't make a long po pose like uh, uh and so on. Of course natural poses are acceptable. You should make natural poses. But again be careful with this because you should sound natural uh, as much as possible. Well, I hope this short video about speaking can help you to improve your speaking section and to improve your and to get a high score, the score that you really wish to get. If you have any further questions, feel free to write them in the comments section. And if you like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'd be very, very happy. Thank you, good luck to everyone.